welcome everyone to Into the Pit. I have here from NSPS TV, Mr. Terry Crozier. How are you doing today, sir? All right, how's it going today? It is rainy day. Yeah, I know. It's kind of it's kind of gloomy, but hey, it's the day where you just want to sit back and drink a beer, you know, <laughs> and, and, and just chill out, you know. Well, I have my my tea. I gotta have my tea. But I uh, make a long story short. Um, we, me, me and Terry here, we started following each other on Instagram, and then I found out that he d doesn't live too far from me, and uh, I, I was kind of excited to know that there was another group close by where I live. So, give us your story. All right, uh, my name is Terry. Uh, I'm the founder of NS. PS uh, TV. Uh, we've been doing this. Hello? Yeah, right here. Right I lost here. you for a minute there. Yeah, uh, yeah we've been doing this for almost, yeah, we've been doing this for almost a year, doing uh, paranormal investigations. We um, we are a uh, uh, Cedar Park product. You know, uh, most of us are, live right here in Cedar Park and. Uh, we came together about a year ago, you know, to decide, well, you know, let's go out and, you know, do something a little weird. So we started our investigation. You know, we went, of course, you know, we had our bumps and bruises. We went from this to that. But, you know, uh, a year later, we we're still at it. You know, we're still kicking. And uh, we're just trying to get, you know, uh, to where I think that we need to be. And that's big time, you know. Uh, there's not too many of us in uh, Central Texas as far as paranormal investigators. I know there's a couple around, but not too many. Yeah. So we, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's, it, it's three, it's four of us, uh, three of us work together. Uh, we work at uh, Buffalo Wild Wings right there off of Cedar Park. Also, yeah, you will see me there uh, just about every night except for Fridays and Saturdays. So if you want to come in and talk to me, you're more than welcome. Okay. You know? I expect some free wings when I go in there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have no problem with that. I mean, uh, I bring home more wings in a little bit. I mean, I'm actually sick of wings, but yeah. <laughs> we can definitely, I could definitely accommodate you. Uh, you know, where we, uh, we were just sitting at the bar one day and we just say, hey man, let's just put a team together because, uh, there's a lot of history in Central Texas, you know, a lot of history people really don't know about or really don't care about knowing, you know, they want to live their day-to-day -day lives, you know, not knowing whether, uh, you know, the property that you live on or the land that you, you know, you own, you know, something might have happened there, you know, so, yeah, I mean, you, you, you just got to be, you know, aware of your surroundings, you know, and do a little history on your property, you know. Uh, yeah. And we investigate from houses, cemetery, abandoned buildings, and uh, slave plantations. You know, that's something that, you know, most people don't know anything about Austin is, Austin do have slave plantations uh, back in the early uh, 1800s. I just happened to come across one uh, about last month and I went out there with my drone and did an aerial view of it and it's, trust me, it's the place that I think that everybody should go to. Uh, it sits it right smack down in the middle of a neighborhood. It's actually called uh, Sneed's Plantation. It's right there off uh, uh, the east side of 35 and uh, yeah, that, that, that's a place I think everybody just should go out there and just, uh, you know, just look around and just, you know, look at the place. And, you know, that right there would tell you how much history it is. Uh, if you, the plantation was, if you guys know anything about uh, uh, East Austin, like around the Dust Springs subdivision, all that used to be a plantation. So, uh, yeah, I, I really urge you guys to go out there and check it out if you're from Central Texas, you know, or you're from Austin, or you're just curious about history. Yeah. And ask you guys to go out there. You know, yeah, for sure. It's a pretty cool place. Uh, well, let me tell you how I actually really, really got started. You know, 
a little bit curious about uh, my, my paranormal. I was a young kid and I, uh, my dad passed away in Vietnam, so, and my mom uh, lived out of state, so I pretty much lived with my grandma my whole life. And her being, a, you know, a true, I mean, a true Southern um, Baptist, you know, uh, they were very, she's very religious. Mm -hmm. So one night, uh, it was a Sunday, and she was, did something she normally don't do. You know, she went to church, you know, and she gave her part of her day to the Lord. And the, re and the rest of the day, she decided, well, it's Sunday. Instead of me cooking Sunday dinner, I'm, I'm going to go out to the club. <laughs> so she went out to the club. <laughs> she went out to the club, you know, and it, it was 10 of us in that house. Because I remember she had 10 boys, 10 girls. So I figured, you know, she had a little right to go out and do a little, you know, a little something. But anyway, mm -hmm. back to the story. She uh, went out one night and she got out of her car. And this is something that she told, you know, told me and the rest of the family on what had happened the next day that, you know, she saw a chariot, I kid you not, come up the street. She was really freaked out. She was like, what the hell is this? Something you never seen before, you know? And so the, the chariot stopped in front of the house. By then she's in the front door. And believe it or not, she told me that the devil himself got out of that chair, walked up to that door, and, you know, her being the Southern Baptist that she was, she, she's not scared of the devil. She wasn't, you know, so uh, they started fighting. The devil said, I want in, and my grandmother said, no, you're not coming in. And they started fighting. Uh, apparently, uh, he ended up making his way into the house and just tearing up the whole house knocking over chairs, tables, couches, just, you know, they were literally fighting. And the whole time you got kids in the house who didn't hear anything. I mean, nothing. You know, apparently this lasted maybe, maybe a good hour, hour, maybe I say give it two hours. Uh, so uh, the fighting had stopped, he had left. And uh, so everybody was getting ready for school. Mm -hmm. So we can, you know, we woke up, you know, thinking everything was cool, you know, and we walked into the living room, into the kitchen, and we saw the place was just a mess. And I asked, we asked our, you know, grandmother, it's like, hey, what happened in here, grandma? And she sat down on that couch and she said, Terry, last night I had a fight with the devil. And I was like, if you had a fight with the devil, how come we didn't hear all this commotion that was going on? Because to me, I slept like a baby. I mean, with, with, with all the stuff that was knocked over on the walls, I mean, with all the chaos, you know, I would figure I would hear something. Somebody would hear something. Right, right. But it was, I mean, Kyle, believe it or not, I did not hear nothing. Did nobody hear nothing? We woke up, the place was a mess. And she was just exhausted. Like she, she put her last breath into protecting us or whatever she was trying to protect, you know. Uh, and that's a story that has always been, you know, I've always, you know, in the back of my head. And I'm like, wow. I mean, can you believe? I mean, every well, you, day I think about that. You have to admit, I mean, that sounds very fantastical. If you tell people that, they're going to think, uh oh, what, what kind of clubbing has she been doing? You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I, I totally believe stories like that because, you know, I've been in similar situations myself. And unless you've actually been through it, people aren't really going to believe you. They're, they're not going to believe it, but you were literally had to been there to see all the, I mean, it was just, the house was just ransacked. And I know that something, I mean, why would somebody drunk go in and ransack their own house? And plus, you know, you got 10 other kids in there that's really not, you know, I, I just can't explain it. I mean, you literally would have to hear all that 
I mean, glasses broke, plates broke, things coming out the cupboard. I mean, couches turned over, TVs, just about everything you could think of that that was, you know, that wasn't right. So, and I'm like, and that's one before she passed away. And I'm, you know, I'm like, that's what one amazing story. And she had to be a long, strong woman to to actually uh, protect her family for something like that, you know. And I'm like, and over there, but uh, on the couch, you know, to, to protect her family for something like that, you know. So I commend her for doing that. And that was really my jump start into actually getting into the paranormal, you know. So. Well, yeah, I, I got to say this, okay, and not to sound stereotypical, but uh, all my friends, you know, if, if ever I ask any of my black friends to go with me on an investigation, they're like, oh, hell no, I don't mess with that kind of stuff. And it's a very rare thing. <laughs> not that there aren't, but I mean, for the most part, most black folks don't mess with it. Yeah, I, I mean, there's a lot of us that, you know, it's from our upbringing that, you know, that we don't do this. We, we don't, there's certain things that we really don't mess with. Right, you right. You know, as far as uh, the paranormal. But yeah, dude, I mean, I'm a true believer. I mean, I, she has no reason to lie on that one. I mean, my grandma told a lot of stories. <laughs> but that one there, I, I, I believe. And she... And I, man, I'm speechless. I'm always speechless when I tell that story to somebody, you know. But that's something that, yeah, that she really, really did her protection on. Hey, get Tori to do it, please. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, ever since then, I've been interested. And dude, I mean, I pledged myself that I was gonna get this and I was gonna get it right. Yeah, you know? yeah. And make sure that, and make sure, you know, because a lot of people ask me, Kyle, mm -hmm. well, you, all your videos are direct. And I'm like, yeah, they're direct. And he's like, why you don't edit? Why you don't put something creepy on there? And, you know, and I'm like, well, that's not me, man. I, I, I just, I don't do that. You know what I'm saying? I just, that's just not me. To get some, getting some help in the background? Yeah, they're over there playing around. Hey, he's right there. <laughs> yeah, that's my oldest son. He just, you know, he's down from uh, my my youngest son. He's down from school. He's uh, he goes to school in Kansas, so he's over here playing with his mom. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, they they're over there just playing around. K Kansas or Kansas State? Uh, KU. KU, huh? Uh, yeah, he's a big boy. He's probably the biggest one I got. I don't know how it happened, but he's about 6'2", probably about 340. Man. <laughs> yeah, big boy. He's but, a yeah. Jayhawk, huh? Yeah. I mean, I, I'd rather have him be a Jayhawk than a, a Longhorn fan. <laughs> hey, 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 watch it, watch it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Uh, they should be over there behind in the couch. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's something that I really. Hey, I'm on here. Can you guys stop, please? Over easily. Sorry about that. They're over there playing around. It's all right. I can cut that out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but get getting back, you know. But after that story, uh, I, I've really been, you know, into the paranormal and really, you know. Like I say, ain't too many brothers do this. <laughs> sure. I mean, the you, you've watched Ghost Brothers, right? Yeah, yeah, yes and no. Uh, I've caught the first couple of uh, episodes on that, and you know, and I, I, I don't know what to say about those guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna say Marcus Harvey. I've actually had him on my show before, and. He's a character in himself. Uh, I like to not got through the interview because he had me laughing so hard. <laughs> but uh, I tell you what, when when you got somebody serious, I mean, really serious, and they might be joking around when they're on television in front of the camera, but these guys are really serious about what they do. Okay. You yeah. know, I've, 
I watched I watched a couple of series from them uh, episodes, uh, but I really haven't got into it uh, into them. Uh, I, I don't know. It was just it seemed like to me it was more playful than actually you know actually trying to figure something out, you know. But then again, you know, I, I don't know those guys, you know, and I wish them all the best you know, in them, uh, whatever that they do. I, I'm pretty sure, that they, I think they got canceled. I'm not quite sure. Um, what well, a, a lot of it has to do with the uh, stations. They, uh, because of all this lockdown and everything, right. they're, they're cutting back on a lot of their, their shows. And right. I mean, even Ghost Hunters, they're not immune to it. They, they were uh, canceled off A&E because of the budget, you know? The budget. And, uh, I mean, they got rid of their uh, live PD show, and that was, like, their most popular show. So, uh-oh. Uh, yeah, it keeps going on. I mean, yeah. I, I, I stay pretty much in, ta- in contact with those guys. Um, we, uh, I've had them all on the show, and then we kind of built a friendship. And um, it's, I mentioned to you about Mustafa. Um, He's supposed to be here on the 19th. Uh, we're going to meet him in, in Mineral Wells. and um, Yeah, I would love to go to Mineral Wells. Uh, well, if you can make it, uh, the lady, I know the lady that runs the place, the old Nazareth Hospital, and just for us, they're, they're doing uh, just 20 bucks to get in the door for the night. Yeah, unfortunately, my, it, that's around January. Now, this one is coming up next week. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, wow. next next Saturday. We're we're leaving up Saturday morning. That's about a, I guess, three and a half, four hour drive, something like that. Half hours. Wow. Is it a return trip, or are you guys planning on spending the night? I mean, um, what happens? Well, you figure we probably won't even finish investigating till somewhere between one and three o'clock in the morning and i know mustafa he's supposed to get on plane early, uh, later on that's sure. sunday so we'll probably we'll probably head back head back know. yeah probably yeah i uh i'm not for sure on what i got planned i know my job won't let me off <laughs> i usually gotta give him a little heads up on what i'm doing uh, one thing about uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, they do support me on, on my paranormal adventures. Really? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, the, these guys here, I mean, they're, they're a pretty cool company. My boss is pretty cool. Shout out to Gus. Uh, so whenever I need, you know, I get a quick phone call or something's going on uh, where somebody needs me ASAP, I, I'm gone, you know, uh, yeah. without any questions asked. Yeah, so I mean, they, they, they you guys are pretty cool, you know. Uh, most of them follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, and not so much Facebook. I'm trying to learn this new one, this TikTok. I'm, I'm trying to figure that one out. I ain't figured that thing out. I'm, I'm I'm giving that over to my daughter. She knows more about that stuff than I do. I don't know how that works. Hey, Tori, bring me my phone charger. Yeah, so I'm a. Uh, um, Hopefully I'll get it all oh, about the speaker. Hopefully I'll be able to figure that one out. It seems like it's pretty interesting uh, just to get over, just to, uh, you know, get like a two minute video out. I mean, I've seen a lot of people doing that, but yeah, that I'm definitely trying. Uh, as me trying to advertise, I mean, I advertise a lot on, you know, just on social media. I really don't, you know, uh, do anything else but that. So, so you, you sound like me. Um, I have all the social media accounts, but I've got to where number one, people just get ugly on there to each other. Yeah. And so well, I, I get on, I put my advertisements about the show or if we're doing anything in particular and I pretty much leave it alone after that. Cause I don't like getting in the middle of all that mess. Well, yeah, what just so happened, you know, the people in Cedar Park are pretty cool about it. I mean, they they ask a lot of questions, you know, and, you know, they figure, well, I got something going on in my house. Can you come check it out? 
you know, so they're, you know, I, I give it to the people out here, you know, they are a little bit curious or what, on what exactly do we do, you know, where we go, yeah. you, know, you know, can I do like a investigation with you guys? But then again, you got people out here that, that, that know, but don't want to know, you know, cause you got people, you know, they're like, well, something is definitely going on. Uh, but I don't want nobody. I don't want my next door neighbor to know. You know, that's so. that's a big deal too. I've noticed that a lot of people are real skeptical about you know. Hey, I don't want everybody in the world knowing about this. Yeah, so they 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 want to keep it hush hush and all that, you know, and and just figure well, it'll just it it'll just go away by itself. You know, but that's not always the truth, you know. Uh, well, you know, another thing is, is we have a lot of uh, Native American uh, burial grounds around here. Yeah. In fact, uh, I used to work for the city of Cedar Park and right where our yard was at, where our, our trucks and equipment and everything went, right in the middle of it, they had a fenced in area. You could not go in there because that was a burial ground. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I, what I'm glad you mentioned that up, because uh, I drive by uh, Millburn Park every day, and you don't. They, and she is buried on the park. Really, I did her, not know that. Yeah, they got her fenced off. Got a big plot right there, fenced off, and she's literally buried on the property uh, at Millburn Park. Cause I. I used to go fly my drone over there. Like I said, and I pass by there every day when I come home from work. And I just happen to make a, you know, look on, just look at her gravestone every time I go by there. I'm like, wow, you know, but check this out. I mean, yeah, that's, I'm not for sure if it's a historical marker or what, but I know she's, they got her uh, section off on one part of the park where you can't go in there and she's there just, Killing. What's interesting about Cedar Park, and it's different than any place else I've ever lived or worked at, there will there'll be neighborhoods, and in the middle of the neighborhood, they'll have a fenced-in area where, with a small cemetery. May not even be that many people buried there, but there'll be a cemetery <laughs> right in the middle of the neighborhood. Right in the middle of the neighborhood. You it's know, crazy. I, I, I got, yeah, I got a call from a, uh, a girl. Uh, she messaged me on Facebook, and like you say, she lived in a uh, blockhouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was, she had just had to ask me a question: Have I seen the man, the, the top hat man? Yeah, mm -hmm. apparently he run, he roams over there by the train tracks. Apparently, he might have got hit by the train back in uh, uh, the early. 1980, I'll say 79 or 80, and he, this guy walked, he walked uh, along the train tracks with a top hat and he just happened to got you know get hit by the train one day and you know and i'm like well i've never even heard of that one you know the top hat man uh, the black top hat man or something like that and you know so i did a little research on it and sure enough a man with a black hat a top black hat did get hit by that train that that runs through there and they end up going up to uh liberty hill and um but unfortunately, uh, the train, the, the section of the, of the train tracks, it doesn't, it's not specific on what section of, the, of, of the, the train track he actually got hit on, you know, because uh, Blockhouse is a pretty big subdivision. <laughs> yeah, it really is. You know, so it, it'd be like a needle in a haystack, me walking around with a, tra with a camera on in somebody's backyard Looking for a guy with a top hat. <laughs> you you're gonna get shot here in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah, I kind of I kind of let that one go, but you know, it's still in the back of my head. You know, is that you know is that myth or is it legend or whatever it is? But yeah, I uh, it's a lot of history. Like I say, it's a lot of history in Cedar Park. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a lot of history in Round Rock. A lot of, it's just a lot of history. In Central Texas, that you know, if you're a paranormal investigator, you need to focus on that history. You know, uh, yeah. you know, and don't get me wrong. Some people will invite you in; they will love to find out. But then again, there's some who don't want to know. 
Well, and you, you know, also have to be careful because there's a lot of people that think, you know, oh, you're going to bring in cameras and they're going to get on TV and yeah. get famous. And it's like, uh, I'm sorry, that's not what we're in it for. We're here to help people. You know, I'm, like, I'm not in it to be famous. You know, I'm in it because that's something that I love to do. And, you know, and that's that's just me, you know. Uh, I mean, I know people, you know, who've asked me, say, well, what are you going to do if you, you know, you get famous and you get put on TV? And I'm saying, well, you know, that's, that's very slim to none. You know, I'm not saying that it won't happen, you know, but I'm just saying, you know, I'm, I'm just going to be me. I mean, I'm just right. going to continue in me doing what I love to do. You know, that, that's, that's me. Uh, now, one of my idols, the, the guy that I really look up to on, on YouTube is Franco TV. I what? don't know if you What's that again? Guy, have, have, you, have you seen him? Who, who's this again? Uh, Franco TV. Franco TV? No. Okay, check him out. He's, uh, he, he's a paranormal investigator who's, uh, who's by himself. I mean, he really doesn't have anybody with him. I mean, he investigates everything from urban cemeteries. He even went out to Area 51 and got ran off. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. I want, let, let me say this. I'm going to stop right here and say this. I do not advocate for anybody to go out and do investigations on their own. You're right. Because that's that you're taking a chance. You know, you get hurt, especially if you're in a place that's abandoned and you're there by yourself. Oh, yeah. You know, you never know what can happen. So I do not advocate that whatsoever. I, I learned my lesson on that when I uh, I was out in uh, Williamson Creek Cemetery. Uh, this cemetery is located off of William Cannon. It's, in the, it's like you just said, it sits down in the middle of a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. It has 1,500 marked and unmarked graves dated wow. back to 1860. I had, when I did my little research, I was like, man, I got to get this. I mean, so, but I didn't have anybody to go out with me that particular night. It was a Saturday night. You know, Saturday night, I'm an old school guy. I rather investigate something than go hang out on 6th Street or, you know, go do what these kids do today. That's just not me. So I decided, hey, what the heck? I go do it myself. I went out there. The gates were open. You know, I started my investigation. I really enjoyed it. This is when I first seen, things got kind of crazy because I saw my first shadow figure. Oh, and, you know, and I did not know how to react or respond towards that. Uh, when you see something you really can't explain, you know, and you know you're the only one there. But as I was walking, I started noticing indentions in the ground. And I'm like, wait a minute, uh, these are graves. Mm -hmm. Because of the, the way the earth, it, everything had sunk in, these were graves. So I was walking, I probably got maybe uh, a couple of feet into the cemetery and I sunk in. I'm like, oh my God, dude, just think if I sunk in, hit this coffin six feet deep, how would I get out of there? You're stuck. You're stuck, brother. <laughs> How would I get out of there? And, you know, and uh, walking into unmarked graves, you really don't know where they're at until your feet actually step into them. Mm -hmm. You know, so I've, I've ran into, oh, my God, that night had to be at least 20 of them. I mean, and I'm just, and my, and my knees are bad already. So every time I walk and I step into a grave, not only, you know, I'm buckling, my knees are buckling also, and not knowing how sta unstable the ground was. So I'm like, oh, golly, dude. So I tried, to, you know, I tried to, you know, go where I can see markers where, you know, but then again, you might have a family member where they couldn't afford the, uh, you know, uh, tombstone or whatever. Then you walk over there, then you turn around, you walk into the same problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah i mean that's i learned my lesson on that you know um where you definitely got to have you know somebody with you or some kind of uh communication where you can actually something wants to happen where you can definitely communicate with somebody 
it's a uh, it's definitely a dangerous profession but it's a fun profession once you get to know what you're doing and what you're looking at you know you make sure you got the you know the right equipment and always always have a cell phone you got to yes. have some communication no if and buts about it uh, but otherwise that i mean i've always tried to care i uh, had the least you know uh two people uh, i understand that half of my team you know they work a lot you know they got families of their own so they might not can do what i do i'm a, you know i'm a little bit older my kids are grown so i'm able to get out there and and do more you know than, than what these guys are doing you know but yeah i, I reckon don't never go by yourself you know unless Definitely not. Hey, never. even if i know the area i still wouldn't do it by myself you, you yeah. just never know you but, never know. I mean, I've ran into uh, cops asking me what I'm doing. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, but... But you're going word? around at night with a flashlight. I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, what are you doing? I, like, uh, yeah, dude, that, that was one weird night. You know, they were cool about it. You know, they. but a good thing about it, I put them on camera. You know, I got... Uh, Photoshops with them because most of them never seen a parent don't even know what, what a paranormal investigator you know was or how you know what he did you know so we sat out there took cameras pictures and everything you know they they were cool about it you know it's like well this is gonna be on YouTube I like well I can't I'm I'm not gonna you know I'm gonna edit you out <laughs> you know because I don't really want any you know problems with that <laughs> so, you know yeah. funny story we um we got a a, a call to do a house this is when we lived close to houston and the neighborhood was already kind of a sketchy neighborhood as it was but i mean it was an older neighborhood the house that we were invited to go investigate was uh un, was not occupied we had permission to be there but the you know the owners nobody was there and so you can imagine walking around in the dark with a flashlight you know going from room to room right. how somebody could get a little suspicious what what the heck are you guys doing you know right. so yeah it's you definitely need somebody there to kind of back you up yeah you know, and it's good to have somebody i try to have somebody who has a little bit knowledge as you said if you uh, ran into something like that that you know that's a little bit uh that knows the law you know, you got to have somebody who's a little bit law savvy, you know, so you can actually, you know, put two and two together. Make something make little sense when, you know, when let's say if the cops do come around, you know, yeah. it's like, so that, that, you know, uh, fortunately, I don't have, any, have anybody like that right now, but, you know, <laughs> I, I'm now, definitely looking. Uh, I mean, I'm, Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Let me I'm cut always you looking for new members, you know, to uh, join the team. I mean, I'm not just stuck on on four, you know, four members. The more members, the merrier for me. Uh, the hardest thing that I have is, like I say, I do all the research my own, and sometimes I just don't have time to do research because I work. You know, have somebody there that that just loves to research things. You know, and give us the, and give us, you know, the, the rundown. The me say, hey, Tara, you know, we got this, we got that, blah blah blah. You know, I think we can do this. You know, and and we can go from there. You know, so that's that that that's pretty much what I'm looking for. You know, for somebody who can, you know, who can do that. You know, who got a little bit more time. Now, let's just say they got a little bit more money than time. You know, because if you got time, if you got money, you got time. You know, but yeah, so that, that that's exactly what I'm looking for, you know, so. And you have to find people who are committed. Yeah, totally committed. And, you know, and don't get, and I've had people that come up, you know, that would love to do it, but you know what the first thing they say? Am I getting paid? Uh-huh. You know. Yeah. That's the, I, the, dude, I, I paid for all this equipment out of my pocket. <laughs> I'm not getting paid. For, I don't charge people to go investigate their no. houses. It's and you got to be leery about people who do charge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't get me wrong. I pay, you know, I, like I say, I'm not swap, you know, I'm not good with the computer. 
you know, this editing thing is something new. I do pay for my, all my editing. Uh, luckily, he's a, a, a co-worker that I can work with. He went to school with, you know, and shout outs to him. He, uh, he only charged me 50 bucks per video, which I don't think is bad because, you know, uh, most people can charge you. If you really want it done right, most people can charge you an arm and a leg. You know, but until I get this editing thing down right, I'll, I'll probably be, you know, paying him. This time he went to school for it, so he has an idea on what he's doing. And, we, you know, I haven't had any issues yet with him or, you know, or with uh, the product that he puts out. You know, whatever I send him, uh, that's what he does. And he's a pretty good cool guy. You know, uh, shout out to Kato. His name is Kato. Kato Editing. Kato? Uh, and- like... Black Hornet and or Green yep. Hornet and, and Kato. Yep. Sorry, yep. that's it, Kato. <laughs> <laughs> actually, he's from actually he's from Houston, Texas, too. Really, I'm sorry. He's from, <laughs> he's, from, he's from Houston, and you know, and he's been telling me, you know, that I really need to uh, get out into Houston and do some investigating out there. But me and myself, I, I just feel like my job is not done here in Central Texas. Yeah. Well, if you're no. gonna go that area, go to Spring. Spring, Texas is the best. Spring, Texas. That's the best place to go. Wow. Got a lot of history there too. Speaking of history, um, have you g- done any investigating in Liberty Hill? Liberty Hill? Uh, no, I can't say I have got that far yet. Well, you know what? I, I kid you not. No. I got a friend of mine who did a cemetery over there in Liberty Hill. I can't think of the name of it. Okay, because uh, I've done a cemetery out there as well. I'm not one big on cemeteries. I, I'll, I'll be honest. I just don't. I don't. I don't see why there would be ghosts hanging around the dead bodies. But you know, I could be wrong. Yeah. But there is a cemetery there where an actual family is buried in a stagecoach in the middle of a cemetery. Are you serious? Yes. Dead serious. Yeah, they were apparently they were killed in some kind of ambush and then they were just buried right there in their stagecoach. Huh. That was that's very I'm having you know, do you have the name of that cemetery, my friend? I, I'll have to ask. My wife knows. I honestly do not remember myself. Um there's actually signs saying you st- you know, to stay out of the cemetery during the evening hours. But, uh, I mean, they got picnic tables out there and everything. So if you wanted to, you know, go out there and have a picnic, you could. They have no trespassing signs uh, out there or they do? Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. I think the farthest I've been north of Austin, uh, we went out to Lano to Babyhead Cemetery. Have you been out there? I have not been out there. Oh my God, dude, you have to go. If, if I recommend any Central Texas paranormal investigator to go to Babyhead Cemetery. Uh, let me give you the history on this place. Uh, back in, I found, believe, the early 1800s, uh, it was some, if you know anything about Central Texas, it was Indians everywhere. And some of the people, you know, um, I don't know who they were. They were, you know, traveling. They settled in Lano where the Native Americans were like, well, no, you're not going to come here and just take our land. Right. So, uh, the, the Indians got pissed off and just start killing everybody. Well, it all started because the Indians killed the baby. On, on the side of a hill. And that's the reason why they called it, uh, there's a hill, there's a mountain out there that's called Baby Head Mountain also. Apparently they took the baby, cut the head off and put the head on top of the cemetery. I mean, on top of the, of the mountain for a warning. Well, it didn't stop the, it didn't stop the, the settlers from coming in. So the settlers kept coming in. And finally, the Indians got fed up and just murdered everybody. Babies, kids, wow, everything. Uh, so when we, you go out to Babyhead Cemetery, you'll be able to see because uh, the damn historical marker 
it has a big historical marker on there. It'll tell you what happened to it. But anyway, that whole cemetery is just babies from the time the Indians, they, they just buried all the babies right there, all the kids. Uh, you might have some, some, some adults out there, but most of them are, you know, infants. Uh, even the first infant, the, the, the baby that the Indians cut a head off, is buried there. But the head isn't, just the body. And uh, so if you go, ever want to go out there, you got the big historical marker, it'll tell you everything. But anyway, we did an investigation out there, and we had our, uh, I think it was the SLS camera. Oh, my God, dude. We picked up kids wanting to hold our hands. It was so much activity out there. It was just unbelievable. Uh, we had our little flashlights. We asked questions. Uh, hey, do you, it's okay for us to be, for us being here. Please turn the flashlight on or off. The flashlights came on or off. Uh, things really got out of hand when my uh, other member, Jeremiah, started playing Indian music with the drums and everything. Things got a little, you know, got a little out of hand there. But if I, if I said, if I had a place that uh, somebody that wants to do a, you know, a paranormal investigation, or you just want to go, actually, actually see something, that would be the place to go. I mean, because the the history is real. I mean, the the cemetery is alive and running at night. I mean, because all these kids there, I mean, the spirits of these kids are actually there. I mean, you, you would actually be shocked on what you would see uh, once you get in that place. Like, we got there probably about around 1130 or so. It's, it's like a two-hour ride from, from here to Atlanta. But once you get there, you will not be disappointed. So I urge you, if you're, you know, Love the paranormal. That's something that you consider doing. And if you're looking for a spot, I suggest you to take that two-hour trip and go to Orlando, Texas, and actually do an investigation there. Uh, these these uh, entities, I mean, they mean you no harm. They're kids. You know, there's nothing bad about it. You know, they just want to – they're just as curious as you are. You know, I found that out when one was trying to hold my hand. Oh, wow. You know, on the uh, on our camera, and I'm like, wow, dude, it, it's it's so amazing, you know, out there. And it's and the good thing about it, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's complete dark, you know. Not only is the you know the cemetery is beautiful, but once you look up in the night sky, you know, it, that's beautiful also, you know. So you, you actually get the two things: you're getting a good view from the sky above, and you you know you're actually getting some good investigation once you get there so i urge anybody you know to go there and check that place out you know be respectful you know yeah, and, very and, important yes be respectful and just you know ask simple questions because we're not dealing with adults we're dealing with kids you know who don't quite understand on what's happening to or to them or what had happened to them you know so yeah that, that's a place you guys definitely got to check out i mean it, it blew my mind, you know, that, and yeah, I'm speechless because you definitely got to check that place out. I mean, <laughs> that's that cool. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take you to Liberty Hill. You're going to take us to Lana. You got a deal, but my Honda don't have any air conditioning, so I don't know. If <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that we'll provide the transportation. You just provide the directions. That, that's that's cool. Uh, you know, actually, uh, west uh, out in that area, the hill country, there's a lot of history over there too. Mm -hmm. uh, I just there is in Lano, there is a uh, a hotel that's supposedly be haunted. I can't think of the name of that hotel. It's right there off the main road. Uh, they made it into a bed and breakfast. But, you know, since COVID is going on, there's, you know, you really can't get in there. Yeah. But uh, uh, what I'll do is, I'll, I think I have a picture of it. I will uh, send you that picture and let you do a little history on it. 
and you know maybe it's something that you guys might want to go you know after you go visit ba after we go visit baby ed and and just do a little stop right there it's a pretty cool little you know uh bed and breakfast well seguin uh, seguin's the same way have you been Seguin, through Seguin? very interesting place a lot of history a lot yes. of death that's where the magnolia hotel is at yeah you know what i we tried to actually get in that place but if I'm right, she wanted to charge us like, I think if I'm right, like a hundred dollar, hundred twenty dollars for the night, and it was like five of us, so it turned out to be like five hundred dollars. Oh my goodness! Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we we decided that we were gonna skip on that place and uh, actually wait till they do wait till they actually finish with the renovations. I'm not for sure if they can if they. Uh, finished the renovations on that place or not. I know they were doing it. Yeah, but that place is very interesting too. I mean, I would love, I would love, if she can raise the, lower the price, I would love to go, you know, but. Yeah, I mean, if it was an event going on, then I can understand charging a hundred bucks a head, but, you know, just to go in and investigate, that's a little steep. Yeah, I mean, not only, or I'm pretty sure she knows what's there already, but, you know, we would definitely be helping her out, you know, because we just, I mean, what we find and what we validate is only helping her to put, you know, on her situation or whatever, you know, she charges. You probably up the, up the ante or a little bit, you know, but. Well, but you I, figure with the history of that being on television and on the different paranormal yeah. shows. I think it's probably why they think, okay, well, we can charge, you know, some extreme amount of money. I mean, come on, you can make your money charge, you know, 25, maybe 50 bucks. You, you're you going to make your money. You will make your money regardless. Exactly. You know, either way it goes, you know, you, you would definitely make your money. I like, uh, where's that one place? It's one place that was charging outrageous you know, and I'm like, no, I, I, I can't, you know, I got a family. I, I can't spend that type of money, you know. Yeah. I mean, I don't understand you guys, but <laughs> I got to look at what's going on here, you know. Well, and I mean, there's a lot of cool places. Then they, you know, like Yorktown Hospital, that's another great place to go to. But they do charge quite a bit to go in there when there's right. so many other places you can go and not cost you a dime. Exactly. See, and that's what I, and that's, you know, when I started up this, that's what I have to say, you know, I'm like, hey, man, I'm, I'm just going to look for places that's not going to charge me anything, who just as curious to know if they actually got something going on, you know, and, and go from there. You know, my last investigation, which I took my wife with me, was uh, uh, Ghost Town in Maynard, Texas. Uh, have you been there? I have not been there, no. Okay, uh, let me give you a little history on this thing. Uh, this gentleman named George uh, graduated from uh, Southwest Texas, and he decided to move up to Manor and build a ghost town. Now, what he did is all the old wood that people don't want and, you know, uh, all these old houses that are being knocked down, well, anyway, he ended up taking all that wood and replacing it and putting it out there. He just building houses up, you know. So we're talking about houses that are run down. Nobody just wants. He literally built a five-acre ghost town out of old wood. Now, and, I have drove by there. I have drove by there. Yes. And he got old, I mean, just old antiques that could have, you know, possible a connection to someone or you know somebody might have liked you know and they didn't want to part with it you know it's just you know it's just five acres of just great stuff and so we went out there uh last weekend and then investigation he said hey man you guys come on out and do an investigation i uh i got some stuff going on out here you know uh these in my kitchen somebody's throwing stuff off the table you know um it's just come out here i need your help 
because I think the last time an investigation team was out there was like 20 years ago, uh, oh. a team called Austin Paranormal. I, I've never even heard. I know that guy, <laughs> Robert. Well, Austin Paranormal. So yeah. he, uh, he went out there, you know, and he showed him, he's like, oh, some orbs and some things. Well, you know, like I was telling him, technology is a little bit different than 20 years ago than what it is now. The things that we have now, they probably didn't have 20 years ago. You know, so we went out there, me and my ex-wife, and, you know, as soon as I walked into the you know, walk, I mean, literally five minutes into the place, uh, we heard footsteps. Boots. I mean, just just boots. I mean, they're like old-timey boots. So, you know, I, I just haven't mentioned, I said, hey, you guys want to follow me? You're more than welcome. You know, uh, we got around to around the post office. We went inside the post office and uh, 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 they got this big porch, this big old Western porch where, believe it or not, if you ever watched the old Western movie and you actually hear the, the boots walking on the porch, mm -hmm. same way. And my wife said, hey, th that, those are footsteps. And I paused, footsteps. And I'm like, wow, check this out. And uh, so we went into the post office. And believe it or not, the, the way the post office is set up, it's set up to be like a uh, upstairs, downstairs, but there's really no upstairs. Right. But there's a balcony on the outside. And we stopped and we're like, there's footsteps upstairs, but there's no upstairs. How is this even possible? And somebody was walking on the on the ledge. And one another thing is when we're out there, uh, if we I watched like I say, I watched a hundred Western movies. Kids really didn't have a place to play. Right. If you I mean, they didn't have any uh basketball courts or anything. So when they bounced the ball, they bounced the ball on the porch or on the walkway like everybody else walked. That's when we heard that too. And that little ball just bouncing. I'm like, oh my God, check this out. I mean, uh, walked around to the jail uh, and it was activity there. I mean, my little ghost meter went off. I mean, it was just, and what really crazy is when we went into the, uh, the church, when we got into the church and I put my little ghost ball right there, because I got a very sensitive ghost ball. If you touch it, it'll go off. You know, and I'm just like, hey, you touch this ball, make it go off, I will leave. <laughs> that ball went off when I got the hell out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, and you know, if you if you tell a ghost, hey, you know, if you do this for me, I'll leave, and they do it, you better be good with your word. Yeah, you, you got to be, because they, they definitely will get angry with you. But, you know, that's the place that I, most people don't think about as a, uh, you know, as something paranormal because the individual will, you know, take things from here and take things from there and put it together. But we also got to realize that, you know, there are ghosts do attach themselves to certain things because that's something that they liked or that's a home that they liked, you know. So wherever, you know, that certain property goes, uh, uh, an entity or a ghost is going to attach itself to that and it's going to move. Oh boy.